How important has Kate Adams' presence been just in terms of being an example for the other guys that are committee breaks at the table? Yeah, I thought, you know, obviously it's been it's been huge to have him back. Really fortunate to have him back, you know. Obviously, the big part is a player. <laughs> he's he's a game changer. But the other the other thing, like you said, is just getting one more year for those young guys to kind of see how it's supposed to be done. You know, just everything from off the field preparation from a mental and physical stamp, standpoint. <clears throat> excuse me, how to come out to practice every day and attack every day, no days off. Right? You know, we talk a lot about stacking days around here, and, and he's kind of an epitome of that. And so he's been awesome, right? Just to have guy the young guys. You know. Even some of the older guys in the in the room that are that are starting to step into larger roles roles like Devin, younger guys like Mark, Quentin come in here, um, just to see see how how it should be done and how it should be done from a professional you know in a professional you know mindset for sure. You see the, the strides from Mark Redman this spring. Yeah, I'm 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 really excited about Mark. I think he's had a hell of a spring. You know, I think he's probably one of the most improved guys on the offense in terms of. You know, I think some some of the things like some people might miss if you're watching it from the outside is some of the run game stuff that he's really taking the next step in. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to him to continue to get stronger in the offseason, right? Grow, you know, put on a couple more pounds, you know, not too much. But he, he's been really good in the run game at the point of attack. We really think, you know, going forward, he's going to be that guy that's going to be that that freaking next in line from that perspective. And then from, from the pass game, I think you guys have seen, right, he's a pretty consistent pass catcher. Right, doesn't have many drops. Pretty catches the ball well. Does a really good job finding holes in zones. It's going to be that big, big target, and for a check down player, and then obviously in the red zone, had had a nice red zone fade the other day, and you know, just he's really happy with his overall development from a mental standpoint too. Just the things he's asked, the questions he's asking, it just kind of you know gets you excited as a coach. What intrigued you about Quentin Moore to bring him in? From What's that? Say that. Quentin Moore. What intrigued you about Quentin Moore to bring him in as a JUCO? And how important is it to kind of get that sort of stop gap to kind of balance up the room? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at Quentin. Um, I mean, the, the number one thing is, you know, the first thing, first criteria here and uh, first two criteria here in recruiting. Number one, is he physical? He is physical, right? He, he gets after people in the run game, especially when he knows what's going. And then number two, is he big and can he run, right? And then he's big and he can run. He's a smooth athlete. He can stretch the field vertically, right? He gets in and out of breaks really well. He's all 6'5", 240. And so he, he's a special dude that, like, I do think, especially, you know, a, a, you know, a year or two when he can mature, he's going to even be better at the point of attack. But he's going to be one of those dudes that's going to give defenses fits. Like, how, how do you want to play us when he's in the game? You want to be a nickel or in base? You know, and that's that's kind of one of those matchup guys that, that's going to give some defenses some issues. Does he resemble Hunter Bryant in being the, kind of the hybrid wide receiver? Yeah, he, he resembles uh, Hunter for sure. But like I, I think I talked to Quinn. I mean, I brought him in here because I think I can put him and put his hand in the dirt, and he's going to go put his face on people too, you know. And 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 Hunter did that some, you know. Hunter, we used him a little bit more like off the ball guy, and we're going to use that with uh, with Quentin too. But I, I think Quentin can be can be an all around guy, you know. We can get him more with his hand in the dirt, and uh, he does have a similar skill set in the pass game, though. You know, Hunter was a special player, like big target guy, freaking made big plays for us, and I, and I think Q can come in and, and and fill that role, you know, once once he gets gets this offense down and he's been working his tail off from a mental standpoint to get that done. With tight end being a position that just seems to be really evolving in yeah. different guys where you have guys that are better, they can go out wide, guys that can go back to fullback. Ideally, how many tight ends do you want on the roster and how would you like that mix to be? I know you'd like them all to be able to do everything, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we you know, you know, we got, you know, everybody I you know, I know everybody gives us a hard time for how many tight ends we got in the room and everything, but you gotta look at it from from our perspective. It's really three different positions, right? We, we have our true True wise, who are kind of our inline guys, really good at the point of attack, really good uh, route runners in zone, right? Can find the open spaces, sit down routes, get the tough catch in traffic. We have the Fs that are kind of, you know, we will flex them out, we'll move those guys around, put them in the slot. They can also be on the backside of stuff. And then we have kind of what we call the H back position, which is more, you know, lined up in wing alignments, you know, in the backfield, and and and, and really good, you know, coming coming from a set, you know, from from the backfield and in the run game, and also. So, you know, being a check downs in the past game. So it's three different positions, you know, and that's why we have a pretty large rule. You know, we, we want to have seven guys on scholarship, you know, and and uh, and and, you know, because it's like I said, three, three different positions within that room. And we ask them to do, you know, each position has a unique skill set.
for sure. Who on the roster can do all three? I mean, Cade for sure, right? Cade can. Um, you know, I think uh, I think Quentin can grow into that. You know what I mean? We 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 ask the guys to do a lot. Like, you know, just because I say, hey, man, you're going to come in here and be a Y doesn't mean we're not going to split you out. Right. Like you saw, like we're going to split split out Mark Red, Mark Redmond. You know what I mean? And and use him out there. But um, but, you know, I think I think for sure, Kate is that guy that can kind of kind of do do it all. He's got he's a he's a savvy route runner, knows how to get open uh, versus man using his size. Right. Can can run routes in zone. And obviously he's he's pretty strong at the point of attack. That's what, that's what, you know, you strive, I tell everybody, strive to be able to do all things, right? The more complete toolbox you got, the more value you're going to add to the program, right? More value you add, more more playing time you get. What, what's the next step for Devin Culp in this progression? Yeah, you know, I, I think Devin... Um, Devin has had, a, has, a, has had a good camp, this camp. Um, you know, just from a consistency factor, I know he had he had one drop ball today, but like you know, after those first two days, first two or three days, he started making more consistent plays in the past game. I think he has taken a big step from a mental standpoint. He did a lot of that, a lot of work in the off season, just studying and, and, and getting this playbook down. And and uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're thinking big things from him. I think I think he's had a good camp, and he's uh, he's been playing physical and doing a good job running with the ones and twos, and and doing his job making plays in the past game, and just. I just want him to just keep continuing to be consistent and, and keep putting good stuff on tape every every day, for sure. Good. All right, cool. Awesome. Here too, so we'll switch them out. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. I think this might have been the toughest day I've seen for all of the quarterbacks. <laughs> How much of that had to do with your DBs? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Coach Lake has put a, a pretty good standard and uh, set a pretty good standard and, and stamp on this room in terms of being able to play situational football, uh, which you saw a little bit out there today, being able to play two minutes and be able to get the job done at the half and the end of the game. Um, and I think the guys just rose to the occasion. Um, I think they understand what it takes to be able to be great. Um, and I think they just really relish on the opportunity to be able to you know, make plays on the ball, um, be pretty consistent, um, and try to eliminate the big plays to give our office a chance to get the ball back or, you know, ultimately to, to seal the deal. And, and I think that's everybody's just living for that moment. And I think everybody rose to the occasion today. Yeah, how is Julius Irvin a different player than, than maybe you saw him when, when you first came back to the system last year? Yeah, I mean, Juice has had a, a really good camp. Uh, Julius Irvin, he's had, he's had a really good camp. He's, uh, he's taking strides mentally. And um, I think, you know, one thing that we stress in our room is when you start to understand the game mentally and, and really increase your football IQ, you'll feel that the game will slow down. Um, and I think he's really bought into that, you know, watching extra tape, um, doing extra stuff out there on the field. I actually just, you know, came back in from doing extra stuff with him out there on the field. Um, and, and, and once you really, um, like I said, hold, hone into that, uh, that, that um, aspect of the game, then you start to see things start to turn over for you. And, and we're, we're excited about him. I know he's excited about where he is right now in terms of his development. And, his, and you know, we're looking for some good things from him in the future. You had a couple uh, walk-ons in, in Mish Powell and Casey Kitchen who made a lot of plays in spring. What have those guys done to put themselves in position to make plays? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I, you know, kind of already said it's in terms of them becoming better students of the game. Uh, Mish is constantly in my office or constantly in Coach Harris's office or he's constantly doing extra work out there on the field outside of practice. You know, there's days you could just, I'm sitting in the office, I can see him out there, you know, working on his, his craft, whether it's his, his technique, his transitions. Um, and, and the little things like that tend to add up when you find yourself in game-like situations. You know, those team periods, the seven-on-sevens, the one-on-ones, and at least you making plays. Same thing with Cajun, uh, Kaysen. He's had the opportunity to move around a little bit and, and the thing about being able to play multiple positions 
it, it really does make you become more of a student of the game uh, it, it, because you're forced to learn other people's responsibilities more so than just knowing what it is that you were doing in that one specific position. And that has helped him out uh, to be able to make some big plays. I mean, you know, showing up and we want all our guys to be very, very, very competitive. We want all our guys to be able to, you know, show up when it's their turn. And I think those guys have done a really good job at capitalizing on their opportunities. Is uh, Jacoby Covington still searching for a position? Man, no, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I think one thing that we like in our room is just this, this position versatility. And I'm sure you guys have seen that, just a whole bunch of guys just moving around, playing different positions. And I think, not, like I just said, it, not only does it help them learn the game because now they're knowing what everybody else is doing, but you know, we want to see you know, who fits where. We want to see who you know, you know, is going to get the job done with you know, everybody on the field. Like, we want them to be able to have the opportunity to you know, develop a relationship, a playing relationship out there on the field. And, you know, giving Jacoby the opportunity to play safety, a little bit of nickel, play a little bit of, you know, our, 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 our money, our little six uh, DB, or even some corner. Um, that, that has helped him become a better student of the game. He's coming up, asking questions. You know, he's having fun out there. And I think that's what we really want. We want our guys to be able to, you know, feel confident in their ability to play. And, and when it's all said and done, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we have all the right guys out there on the field. You come into spring, say he's going to be a safety this week. He's going to be a cornerback this week, nickel this week. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, there, there is no, no specific strategy. Um, there is no specific strategy. You know, with Coach Harris and I just kind of sit down and, and, and we kind of just, you know, we want to see who's going to step up and we want to see who's going to, you know, really rise, and, you know, rise to the top. And, and um, all of our guys like to compete. They all, they all like to get out there and they just want to get on the field at any way, any, any short shape or form that they can. K-Fab looks like he also flashed them with the spring. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. Um, yeah, Cam Cam has had a really good, really good camp. Um, he's uh, you know, prior to coming into this 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 spring, man, it's awesome, man. I mean, I'm I'm just looking up and all these guys, this is their first time having a spring, you know, like Cam Fab, uh, Trent McDuffie, uh, you know, Jacoby Covington, like all these this is this is their first time really having a spring. And so um, to see the strides that he's taken is, is, is pretty good. It's pretty awesome to, to witness. And I think the you know, the reason that he is taking strides is because he, he has become um, very invested in becoming a student of the game. Uh, I remember during the season, he was standing right next to Elijah Moden and ask him questions and just pick his brain and try to see what it is that he was doing after practice. He would, you know, do some extra drills with Elijah Moden. Um, and, you know, from my time here as a graduate assistant and now, you know, as, as an assistant coach, like I've noticed that the guys that tend to do really well here, they're the ones that pick the brains of the guys, the veterans that are doing it at the time. And so that's what has allowed for him to really take those strides and those gains in terms of becoming more confident in what he is, you know, what he's doing out there. And, and um, in addition to, all, you know, the other guys, I mean, they really, they really are each other's like brother's keeper and they keep each other accountable. How good is the trend with <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that. <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that. Seems like I don't see him much out there. Is he really locking down that side of the field that much? Well, you, I, I think what I'm pretty sure Coach Harris has said this. I think what we're trying to do is, is see those young guys step up, and at the same time, we're we're trying to hone in some of those leadership skills, and we're giving Trent the opportunity to become more of that 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 big brother, that leader, that coach, um, to help those young guys see what it is that he's had the opportunity to see, and all the snaps that he's had in this conference, um, and that's what you know that's that's what we're looking for in him. Um, obviously, we, you know we know what we got in him in terms of him being a, a really great defensive back, a really great player. Um, to be able to change the dynamic of the game, um, but we're, I mean, we're just excited about him growing um, in that aspect in terms of helping those young guys really, really kind of develop. One more, just Elijah Jackson and um, uh, James Smith. Yep. They sure the part out there. What are you seeing out of them? Yeah, I mean those those uh, Elijah and James are some really good some really good young bucks. I wish I looked like them when I played, uh, but I, I think that you know I think they're definitely 
making some gains. They're, they're definitely improving day in and day out. They're, they're bought in. They're asking questions. Um, Elijah Jackson, you can't get him to stop asking you to, to do extra work at the practice. I mean, he, you know, he's there bugging you. He's like that little gnat just literally staying with you the entire time. And I think, you know, we'll see some good things from those guys in the future because um, they're buying into it and, and they're really taking in all the coaching points that not only myself, Coach Harris, as well as Coach Lake are giving to them. Um, and, and that's all they can do. That's, that's, that's what they're going to do to be able to, you know, be their best. And they're having a really good camp. All right. Thanks, everybody.